So I'm there talking to this lady. She's about to buy this fucking pen, and here comes fucking Cap. Oh, shit. Right? And I didn't even know who the hell he was because I never met Cap before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And, and there's this big dude standing. There. I'm sitting and talking to this lady. So you're a tea kid, huh? Oh, f- And I'm like, yo, man. I get up. I get up. And I'm still looking up at this motherfucker, man. Really? You know? <laughs> and, yo, let me tell you something, man. He goes, so you want to fight? And I... And I look at him, I said, fight. He goes, yeah, let's go outside. And I said, outside. Boom, I hit this motherfucker with all my might, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Broke his fucking nose the first shot, man. And yo, I was pounding this dude left and right, but he grabbed me and he wouldn't let go of me. He had me by the face. face. He had my, like like that. And, And I was still banging him and shit, right? And at one point, he tried to, he tried to push me, but I, I was strong and, and I put myself in a certain position yeah. right while he's holding me. And then with my hand, I came like that, right? Yeah. And next thing I know, we both so swing left and I threw right. him, I threw him like through to a fake wall. Yeah. And he still wouldn't let go of me. Really? And I landed on top of him. And he's still right? holding your face and like he, that. Well, now he let go, and now I'm hitting him, and that's when everybody came. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NoPolandRecords.com Fox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Oh yeah, New York's in the house. Well, let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Yo. Keller podcast, live and direct, central London, as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be. You don't want to be anywhere else, trust me. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, no polandrecords.com. Big shout out to strangestation.co.uk and everybody that's got the Television app. It's a sporting art. You know what to do. Free download, Android, iPhone. We have a legacy holder inside the place, an OG, an original from New York. New York, New York. TNB, Vamp Squad. We're going to get into it. Yes, indeed. Ghost Yard King. Hold tight. T-Kid inside the place. What's up, my man? What's up, my man? How are you, my brother? Chilling, bro. A little jet lag, but yo, I'm here, man. I made it, man. I landed, brother. We were just talking about this before we started. The first podcast we did was under excruciating pain of the lockdown. Fucking lockdown, man. That shit was crazy, man. You know, but it's funny because I was looking at that lockdown on TV. I wasn't locked down, man. We was walking around fucking doing shit. The only thing that was hard to get in New York, man. It was toilet paper. Toilet paper. Yeah. And I, and I didn't need that shit because we already had. Like the so rest we were of the good. world. The rest yeah, the of the rest world. of the world was fucking up. Man. It was like it was like the new crack, yeah. wasn't it? it was like, what? Yo, it. I'm telling you, man. A lot of people are like, yo, you got toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> that shit was fucking It's deep. funny to think about it now because this feels like such a, a long distant <laughs> horror movie of a yeah. of a cinematic free box episode. It was just like like, it's funny to think we were even we were in that world at that Yo, time. Dude, man, that shit was crazy, man. And, and, I mean, it still is, man, the after effects. I mean, the shit that mm. happened. Mm-hmm. See, that's what happens when, when people, like, go through shit like that. Yeah. When they come out of it, they fucking come out nuts, man. Yo. <laughs> okay. <The> subject <laughs> switch right here. Isn't that true? Word, man. People come out nuts, man. They come out with all this shit, man. See, they had nothing to do, man. So, you know, everybody was on the internet. So whatever yeah. bullshit was flying through the internet, people yeah. start believing that shit. You know, and it ain't about politics, this, that, or the no, other, no, man. No, no. But it's just like the, the the mind, man. Why is that though? You know, the idle mind, brother. The idle yeah, mind, yeah, playground, yeah. brother. Plays you know, you. yeah, it fucks with you, man. Yeah, and then after a while, you start getting the, Listen, the man, itches in it. Yeah, I'm telling you, the best thing, man. The best thing, the best yeah. thing to do, man. If you're a writer, bro, in those times when there's lockdown, you go out underground, mm. you know, and mm. do what we do. You know, <laughs> shit. I mean, I mean, you know, I. I, I Oh. I did pretty good, man. Yeah. Yo, not for nothing. I did pretty good, man. I did a lot of shit, man. I kept busy, man. I kept really? busy. Yeah. A, I kept busy. Kept Yo, moving. Let me tell you, man. The gas was cheap, man. I was driving all over the fucking place, man. I was getting signs. I was getting all kind of shit, man. Oh, you were just hitting up. I was just hitting up, man. Yeah, because the moment they start saying, put the mask on, it's like, yo, that ain't something short of what we always do. <laughs> you, you know what's funny, man? It makes it easier. You know what's funny, man? You know, we, we, didn't, we didn't catch the, that goddamn fucking virus, man. 
Mm. We caught that shit after everything opened up, like a couple mm. of, I want to say about six months ago, yeah. at a show in Brooklyn. Oh, you got it? I yeah. got that yeah, shit. Yeah. I think and then I gave it. it to my wife. My wife yeah. was like, I ain't got that shit. I ain't got that shit. <laughs> Guess what? Three days later, she had that shit. Yo, man. I love the denial in people. It's like, no, I'm, I'm superhuman. You. I couldn't possibly get it. No yeah. way. Yo, I, that's what I thought, man. I thought I was superhuman because yeah, I didn't yeah. get that shit. I think man. everyone does. I think there's this, this theory that it, it because it's it's it became this like parody. It became like a theater, theatrics on TV, and you're just like, nah, ain't me. Shit, just man. Hit you. Hit you. Yeah, I know, man. But you know, I got it, man. And nothing, man. Yeah. I got vaccinated. I got all that shit. I don't care, man. Listen, man. I did enough drugs, man. Give me another drug. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. I don't give just a shit. Chuck it all in. That's chuck it, man. Oh well, we're gonna get in some deep, in-depth analysis of the mighty T Kid. For those of you who don't know about the T Kid, oh my goodness. I mean, my first instalment hangs on the wall, if you're not uh, watching Ooh. and listening. It hangs on the wall right here in the form of Graphitism, issue six. I know it's a little bit late for a lot of you old schoolers, but for me, T-Kid embodies this, yeah, this bravado of complete and utter conviction of, of New York, New York, at, at the, the pivotal of, of graffiti times. Some of you, man. Yeah, man. I was out there, man. I was, I mean, late 70s, early 80s, man, you know, especially when we started the Vamp Squad. That shit got crazy, man. Yeah, let's talk about Vamp Squad. Let's get into this. The Van Squad. Well, the Van Squad was started. I started that shit up in Yonkers in um, 1980. And mm. I remember it was like around, it was the fall of 1980. It was me, this kid Mike Duss, mm -hmm. um, Shock 123, Pessa was there, and my brother was there. Now, out of all those, the only one that stood in the Van Squad was me and Shock, huh. right? And, um, you know, the first members of, of the Van Squad was myself, was Shock 123, and then, um, he, he was like into, that bad man as well. Yo, he was like you know, that. You know, and you know what's funny? Shock Shock was a vicious dude, man. He could yeah. throw with his hands, and man. And still now, to this day. To this day, day man. Yeah. To this day, Big man. Big shout out, Shock, for yo, real. 123, yo, my All man. Hold tight. One, two, three, hush. Oof. So, yo, man, Oof. check it out. Check it out. So, um, it was me, Shock, and then um, we, we incorporated men. But before mm -hmm. men, it was um, Take One and um, Vista, Oof. Bill Rock, and... Um, you know, we, there was another crew, TVS, the Vice Squad Six. That Damn. that was Min and Zephyr and all those guys. And basically, you know, we told Min, "Yo, man, let's meet up with these guys. We gotta tell them they can't write TVS no more, man, mm -hmm. because it ain't the Vice Squad Six no more. Now it's the Vamp Squad." And um, how did that conversation go down? How did that? How it, did that? Central out? Park, the band shell. It was real easy, man. And one, two, three, we went. They were like, "Yo, okay, whatever, man." You know, because they weren't really. They they were more like Rolling Thunder writers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know. And um, it was real easy. So they stopped writing TVS and stuff, you know, and, and we took over that, that moniker. Yo, casual, know? super now, casual. Now, <laughs> like somewhere down the road, I remember we was on the one train and we, we, we were heading down to a South Ferry, right? And uh, we ran into some kids, man, right? And our shock, he had lived in Stanton Island huh? prior to moving up to Yonkers and stuff, right? He originally comes from Spanish Harlem. 106th oh, Street, right, okay. right? And let me tell you, man, Shock at that time, he was the youngest. He was 15 years old. He was a big dude, 15 years old, oh. man. Was he Was he one of the youngest of the crew? He was the youngest wow, of the crew, okay. man, but he was one of the most vicious. Don't fuck with him, kind Don't of. Don't fuck with him, oh. man. You know, and you can understand why. If, if, you know, and this is, you know, Shock stories for Shock to tell. Mm -hmm. You know, not my, not for me for to sure, tell. For sure, for sure. But just you know? as a narrative. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, so, you know, what he's been through and stuff made him who he was and stuff, and he was good with his hands on top of that. You know, just like his father, just mm -hmm. like where he came from, right? So we ran into these kids, man, on the one train, man, and um, it was, you know, we were going to take them off. Mm -hmm. So they got all like, yeah, what, what's up? So we was going to throw down, right? And then one of them said something about, I said, yo, shock. And then and one said, yo, you shocking. You know, Rin. And then they, when they said Rin, the mm -hmm. name Rin, I don't know how it popped up, but the name Rin was mentioned. These guys, that was Bino and Basic from TD, the Destroyers, Ooh. from a Staten Island crew okay. that ran with Rin 1, who was Shock's mentor. Wow. So you with know? the moment, he so, that. So, so once that happened, once they said that shit, so all right, cool. So we met, made a meeting and we met up and stuff. They brought Rin and now the Van Squad got bigger. Wow. So that's how, that, that was like how the Van Squad just progressed, it's progressed. It's domination. Like. I'm telling you, man. And then it became, it, it just became like this, this, um, it, it, it was like a boulder rolling down a hill. You couldn't stop it, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And it got worse and worse and worse. And at one point, I was like, yo, I can't deal with this, man. You know? Really? We, yeah, I had, I had to. I mean, you know, I, I I had that stuff, but I just came out of gangs and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Getting shot and all that bull crap. So, yeah, so let's, let's just 
circle around this for a minute because um, we did talk about another podcast. You can check that podcast if you would like to. T Kid One Seventy. Most definitely, he's familiar with, the, with this show, and uh, you should be as well. Ballbusters was the was the gang. Ballbusters was another gang. Yeah, that was a gang, and, and the way that 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 whole beef started, you know. We were on Dykeman Street. This wasn't a graph gang. This was no. The just... ball busters were drug dealers. Now, okay. now there was kids. There was kids. Um, Chase and, and Baby Rock uh -huh. and, and and C One Thirty Seven. You know, mm -hmm. and all these kids, man. That they were, you know, they were from that neighborhood, yeah. right? And they weren't really ball busters. You know, they were graph riders, man. Ah, okay. I think they were. I think they were FBA guys actually really? before FBA. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. I, I gotta talk. I gotta find down and stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so, so the way, so, so the way that that whole thing went down, man. That whole war started, man. Was um, we won. We won. Dykeman was me, Ren, Shock, and a kid, Sid One Thirty Seven, came up and gave me a pound and said, "Yo, dude, man, you do some dope pieces." Blah blah blah, right? And I was like, cool. I gave him a pound. And out of nowhere, Shock just came and fucking knocked his ass out <laughs> for, for no reason. And that's how that whole war started, man. Wow. Yo. Just for that one punch alone. Listen, man. You know, and, and I don't know what the reasoning was behind, but that started that whole war, you know? Wow. That started that whole war. And it Formidable. got to the point. It, it got yeah. to the point. Like, I remember... Um, I mean, every day they would come up and stuff. They would come up and, and, and of course, you know, they would do fair throwdowns. Like, Shock would take on. He yeah. was like, yeah, fuck it, man. I'm going to fight whoever. Really? And let me tell you, man, Shock would just knock these kids out, whoever they brought. Right? Really? So it got to the point where they had to get the big guys, the drug dealer guys. You know, these were cocaine dealers, man, from Broadway between 137th and 145th. And it's a funny thing because they never left that area. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, they, yeah. like, like, if you left, if you went up to, like, 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 Two blocks up or one block up Amsterdam yeah, Avenue, yeah, yeah. they wouldn't they wouldn't chase you up there. And the reason I know is because when they one day they chased us all. Like they we were it was me, Bill Rock, Kaz two oh seven, yeah. um, Min One, um, Bino, Basics, uh, I think this kid Saint, um, who else? Mace and Zone from Yonkers. Damn. You know, it was a lot of we were gonna do we were getting ready to do like a whole train of whole cars, right? Cal. Kel was there. Kel 130, what is it? Kel 139? Kel first. Jesus Christ. Hold on, so it just breaks for a second because my mind's completely scrapped. That is in insane. But, but, but questionably, like, that ultimately drags the crew into some things. Mm -hmm. How were you guys about all of this? Because obviously there is this, like, there's this role play of, like, leverage. He's going up the ladder of, like, being, you know, being challenged by, you know, Everybody. Yeah. yeah so, but you you've got a whole fo he's like he's like the the general of the crew, right? So like how, <laughs> what, how what's your response to that? My, how, how are you fixing? Listen, man, my my response was, you know, it, the when it came to the van squad, it was like every man for himself, yeah. you know? Yeah. You got to remember my crew was TMB. Yeah, you know, we yeah, were about yeah. peace and this stuff. When it came to the van squads, when we would get together and run around and start trouble, and it re there was really like nobody leading, whoever like, mm. like started something, you know, and, and we all did. We all did shit. We all did. They, they, that's just one of many stories. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. time Shock took the lead, another time it was me who started some shit, another time it was Ren who started some shit, you know, and, and it's just one story after another, after another, so after another. So, how did another. you get shot? Man, dude, man, how did I get shot, man? Right. Being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you know what? I really don't want to talk about that, man. Is that because thing? That, that, that's something I'm trying to put behind me and shit, man. You know, I just want to give out a, a shout out, man, you know, to my man Satch who saved my life, man. And it's not the graffiti ride, another kid, man. You know, he really? saved my fucking he, he life. He saved your life? Yeah, he saved my life, man. Oh, you big know, shout out, Because if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be He okay. saved my life, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, but the truth of the matter is, man, um, you know, gang life, man, th that's why I left the gangs, man, because that shit was nothing but negativity, man. Yeah. And I left gangs. And it got to the point where the van squad became like a gang, and I had to get away from that. Mm -hmm. Because, I don't know, something inside of me was like fight. Like, that, like there was this war going on inside of me at that time. Yeah, just not just outside, but inside as well. Inside, man. Yeah. You know, like I was like struggling with what's right, with morality and all that mm -hmm. shit, man. You know, and I really wanted to progress with my graph, man. You know, I really wanted to get into the style. Mm -hmm. and, and all this vicking and vamping was in impeding because now I was making a lot of enemies and people, you know, and it's kind of hard yeah. to paint when you're trying to do stuff like that. No, it's not you know? fun. Your back's against the wall and then you, you know, don't know what's behind I it. I mean, everywhere <laughs> I would go, I remember when I was with my ex-wife before she was my ex-wife, <laughs> you know, before she was my wife, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm on a train, man, and, and this kid comes out of nowhere, yo, you fucking vamp me and shit. And mm -hmm. I had a fight with the dude on the fucking Atlantic 
subway station and throw them into the tracks. And this was this shit was happening all the time. Where does it come? Okay, so because we really are dealing in some very sensitive areas here, mm. but I am very curious to know, like that energy perpetuates and it becomes such an energy it, it overrides the whole purpose people will know tkid 170 as a style defining writer unquestionable above everything your contribution has been style it's actually uncanny to hear you say i had to move away from that because i couldn't even create i'm telling you it was getting to the point where you couldn't i couldn't fucking get to a fucking like really get down, like I wanted to get down and stuff because it was so much negativity. So I had taken like a, a hiatus, man. Like I dropped everything, man, you know, and I was like, yo, you know what, Shock, man? And Rin, actually, I, Rin, I made that decision. I says, yo, I, I'm out of here. I'm yeah, out of yeah, this. You guys yeah. go ahead, do your thing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they did, you know, God bless them, they did. And it's funny because I ran into Rin not too long ago, man. He's looking good, man. You know, he's Really? Doing, oh. Yeah, and he's a changed person, man, you know, he... He's a positive person today, man, and it was good, you know, it was good catching up to him. Yeah, man. that's a beautiful you know? thing. But at that time, you know, you got to understand, we were young. Rin had just gotten out of being locked up. He mm. had a lot of energy, a lot mm. of negative energy, you know. And, and it's not that we were bad people. We, were, we weren't really bad people. We were just like, you know, you know when, when, when you put certain types of people mm. together, all alpha males <laughs> and shit, and they all got something to prove and shit. So some teenage and that, that's, Ninja Turtle shit. It, yeah, kind of shit like that. <laughs> and, and it just progressed, you know, and a, and a lot of stories were made, you know, and a lot of enemies were made and a lot of shit was talked and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, man, you know, I kept on. My dream was always to become a style master, a graffiti yeah, writer, boy, and I got myself away from that. I always find, and this is just an observer, you understand, is uh, um, being up against the wall, pinned and painting, um, conversations arise, and it kind of reminds me, the, the, the kind of hearsay chat chat is like a barber's store, <laughs> right? Yeah, pretty much. Because no one's got the anything. barber shop, yeah. man, I mean, yeah. Because no one's you know, got anything else to do. They're just there painting you know, and talking. And, and, and you got to also remember at that time, too, like, I, you know, even though I walked away from that, you know, I, I still had that in me. Yeah. And, and, like, when I went over here to Berlin in 94, uh, so you know, we when I went the over magazine. there, yeah. you know, I was with one crew, and dope people, dope rider, and we went to the turf of another crew to do yeah. a wall, and this other crew showed up, you know, and they was going to throw down over that wall, uh -huh. you know, and I was like, fuck it, you know, but then I said, you know what, man, I stepped in the middle, man, and I talked to both crews, and I was like, yo, listen, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, what are we going to accomplish here? We're going to fight, we're not going to get nothing done, you know, y'all want to, they wanted to paint with me, these guys wanted to paint with me, yeah. you know? And I was like, why don't we just paint together and cut the shit out? Cut the shit out. You know, let's cut the shit out. Let's paint together. Should be simple. And guess what? The gun was from one crew. The knife was from another crew. And you know? then you cut. Right, okay. and, and, I, and, and they get, they, I okay. said, I'm going to hold these weapons, All you right. know, whatever it is, you know. And, and let's paint. And we did, and we got down, and we had a great time, man. So for, for those who are listening and watching, so the Graffitism magazine I'm referring to, which is on the back of the wall, has a picture of T-Kid with a gun on the left, a uh, knife on the right, which is exactly as explained. Um, <laughs> but for me, when I saw this magazine, right, and this was of an NWA kind of, you know, yeah. gangsters paradise era. To Coolio, see T -Kid, rest in peace, Yeah, man. Coolio, rest in peace, exactly. Yeah. Um, to see T-Kid... Rocking fucking gun and knife. I mean, I mean, I don't know what sig signals you intended to, to, to send, but um, for sure, it, it definitely resonated with me, my young, impressionable it, it, it mind. Was, it was just a crazy day, man. I mean, shit was going to go down. Shit was going to go down. Thank God it didn't, man, you know? And I guess, like, the most important thing is that we got the paint because at the end of the day, man, yo, we're graffiti writers, man. You know, and if you really go back into the history of graffiti writer, it wasn't about vamping and vacant and fighting no, each other. It wasn't, wasn't really about that. No. That came later, man. That came when, when, when it got, the trains got crowded. It was fighting mm. for space. There was a reason behind all that mm, stuff. Mm, mm. But when graffiti started, these were kids having fun. Yeah. And that's what it's supposed to be about, so having fun, man. Yeah. You know, getting up, getting your name and... And learning off each other, where'd man. Your name, where'd your name come from? Where did you get TK? Yo, TK, well, when I got shot, I was in the hospital, right? And my brother brought me, like, I was locked up, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I was handcuffed to the bed whenever the, I had a cop in front and everything, <laughs> you know? So so my the only people allowed to, well, not the only people um, who really just came to see me was my brother and my mother, right? My father disowned me. So my brother one day comes to see me, and he bring me a little sketch pad and some buffalo markers, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was uh, scribbling and shit. And, and I scribbled Big T, 
and Kid, because these are the two names that they called me. They called me Big T because I was tall and skinny. Mm -hmm. And when I played football, man, they said, yo, throw the ball. And they said, oh, look at that Big T over there. So they started calling me Big T nice. on the block. Right. right? And then um, Kid, because I was always the youngest. Like when I got into the gangs, man, they used to make me go into the bodegas and rack up the freaking uh, the quartz of Ballantyne Ale, yeah. the old English 800. Yo, Kid, let the kid go, go rack some shit up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get the young, because I was the youngest kid, you yeah. know? And they, you go in the store, nobody's watching you and shit. Mm. I would come and I rack up the. They weren't 40s back then, they were paint, I mean, quartz. Oh, so, okay. So it was different. It, was, it wasn't, mm. they weren't 40 ounce joints. Yo. You know, and it was Ballantyne Ale, Old English, and Coke Forty Five. That was what we drunk and shit. You know, see, see, and, and bear in mind, we're we're drinking teas and coffees. Like I'm drinking coffee. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're drinking you've, tea. Yeah, I'm drinking. Tea. We've we've been out, you've been off the alcohol for a while now. Right? Yeah, stop by, stop by, uh, stop using now. And coming up, I'm coming up on eleven years clean, man. Fantastic, clean and serene, man. Clean and serene, isn't it? Yeah, man. And, and guess what, man? I've been so productive, man. Mm. You know, I've just been busy, man. Life's changed, man. I got married. I bought a house. You know, these are the positive yeah. things that happen when you stay with something, man. That's you right. know, when you stay with something. And a good and a good wife and a good a good lady. Of course. Oh, of course. she's running the marathon. The reason I'm here is to run the marathon. Yes. she's running, not me, man. I'm fucking sitting here drinking coffee. Very and much so. And also, might just add, uh, tomorrow this is coming out in time. Oh yeah, you've got your exhibition, haven't you? Done a, a yeah, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting down with Zombie and them, man, in the Chrome and Black Shop. Yo, them, them, some cool people, man. I painted with Zombie, and um, in France. Um, and then I got I got the chance to paint, hook up with him, and paint with next to him in in uh, in uh, what was that? In Birmingham. 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 Yeah, yeah. And I think you did Trellick as well, didn't you? With Park. Trellick Park. Park. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Trellick Park, man. Me part. Mm. Yo, man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's another cool brother part, man. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So I'm gonna be um, I'm, I'm pop little pop up show in uh, the Chrome and Black Shop tomorrow. Mm. You know, from two two o'clock onwards. I yeah, two two on. Two you know, it's gonna be a party. I got some prints. I got posters, man. Come on down. I'm signing your black books, whatever, man. You, you know? know what it that's, is. Because that's really what it's all about, man. Mm. You know. I wasn't. I, I just came here to support my wife, and I was like, "Well, while I'm here, man, let me get down with the guys and stuff, yeah. man, and have some fun and meet some graffiti writers and whatnot." Because that's you know, for me, that's what it's always about, man. Meeting yeah. new kids, and and, and I be watching their styles, man, and I be watching and I be learning from them, yeah, man. Yeah, for real. You know, I be learning. Well, we've been learning from you for a long, long fucking time. Yo, the, the only reason I'm still here is because I be watching what people be doing, and I try to incorporate and I try to stay relevant. Do you? Do you so you, yeah. you, you observe from I a from have to, man. Yeah. You know, Padre, man, my mentor, man, mm -hmm. he taught me that shit. He was like, yo, T, man, listen, you're going to see writers and stuff. You're going to see stuff you like, and the whole thing is about learning how to incorporate shit into your piece. Mm -hmm. Always keep an open mind, because that way you'll grow. You know? You'll never stay stuck. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, you... The, no disrespect to nobody, but you got a lot of old school writers that do the same thing over mm. and over and over. Yeah, yeah, and after a while it gets repetitive. It, exactly. I always think to myself, do they get bored? I mean, they must get bored. I mean, me, I, I'm, I'm like, yo, fuck that, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to learn new shit, and I'm constantly doing it. And now my thing is doing shit bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. bigger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you see my fucking pieces, man, they're giants. Yeah. And if you see my fucking, you know, the, 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 the steel, the iron mm. horses, man, if you see the shit <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, <laughs> the Steel Horse Alliance. Yeah. We know who you're. Um, all right, let's get into some ghost ghost yard talk mm. because I, for me, this that was, was my spot. That bro, was my spot. I know it is, and I, I'm the, it's the most was curious of for all of it. It's almost like a folklore because you know we look from afar. Talk to us about the ghost yard. The ghost yard, man. Let me tell you something, man. So, so the ghost yard. You know, it's it's had different people running in at different times, but I want to say from eighty eighty two on to like around eighty five. Mm. Right until '85, I was running that shit, and the reason the reason was is because you know I hooked up with some cool cats, man. I hooked up with with um, Mac, you know Sam. First, I hooked up with with with, with Ken Double N, you know, and then then Ken hooked, you know, introduced me to Sam, mm -hmm. right? Sam too, and me and him, yeah, like we were kindred spirits, man. You know, we were like the same and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, Sam came from 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 from. A hard background and shit. And he was a good, you know, he was a good guy, man. He had style too, man. He, you know, I mean, his style was simple letters and stuff, straight blockbuster letters and big shit, man. But he he was dope with that, uh -huh. you know. And Ken Ken was just so eager to do shit, man. So so we got together. Ken introduced me to Sam, and then um then um they introduced me to Mac and a couple other guys and whatnot, you know. And basically, me, Sam, and Mac were like became like a team for a minute. Three headed monsters. Yeah, we became and. 
you know, the ghost yard was my yard. I started bringing them in there because, it, first of all, it was a good yard to do it. And you caught every trainer because it's a repair station. So you never knew what you was getting. You was getting BMTs, INDs, Yo. you know, letter lines, all kind of letter it's lines, like, shuttles, like, you know. because a mix of trains. Yeah, depots. man, you would get everything there. Now, the only thing is you had to watch which one. You had to know which trains to paint because sometimes they would buff them before they even leave the yard. And I had that shit happen. So you learn that when you do them next to the, closer to the river, that means there's a good chance that they're going to run through the buffer because that's at the end over really? there. But if you get them on the other side, there's a good chance they're going to run because they already got buffed, cleaned, or done, or whatever, <laughs> you know? And um, <clears throat> at that time, now we're talking, you know, the early 80s, and you had new writers. I mean, a bunch of them coming up. And they were knuckleheads. They would break shit. They would make the yard hot. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, you... We got we to gotta, we gotta protect this yard, man. Don't let nobody in here. Don't bring nobody. Because you bring one guy, then that guy brings another guy, and then that guy brings another guy, and that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That happened, you know? It happens I, in all environments of graph, isn't I, it? I'm telling you, man. And next thing you know, you got a fucking party and cops coming in all the time because yeah. that yard was so sweet, man. Mm. I mean, we would go in there on a Friday night and come out on a Sunday. Mm. And we would just come out, like send somebody out to go rack up some salami, some bread, you know, cheese, whatever the fuck, you know. Some smokes and it was good. Exactly, man. Weed, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Yo, not for nothing. I miss smoking weed, but I just, yeah. it just makes me lackadaisical. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I got no use. Send you to sleep. Send you yeah. To sleep. You know, hey, if you're doing it, God bless, man. That's your thing, man. But anyway, so yeah, so we protected it. And I remember we, we used to see guys like Cope 2 up on the bridge looking. They wouldn't come in because they knew. A younger you know? Cope 2. I've yeah, a younger Cope 2. And let me tell you, me and Cope are good friends today, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and all this shit they say about him, man, come on, let's let's stop that stuff. Yeah, it's part but, of the course. But, but, yeah, all politics and whatnot, man. Mm -hmm. One guy don't like another guy or whatever, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I get you. I but, know. um, you know, the guy bombed and shit. But back then I was going to fuck him up. <laughs> you know, I remember I caught him on, on the Kingsbridge station and stuff, man. I was going to hit him with a bat, you know. And that's how I got into the fight with Cat. Oh, so, so All right, let's have a chat. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 you know, and no disrespect to Cope. I ain't talking bad about it. I'm just, I'm no, just no, saying no, no, some no, no. facts, that's your some, shit no. that, some shit that happened. That's right. You know, I remember we were, we were smoking weed in St. James Park. It was me, Sam, Rack7, you know, um, Ken. Legends, and this legends. kid stopped. This kid stopped from the neighborhood, man. You know, and um, and I tell, and, and it, somebody goes. I think it was Swan. Swan was the one that protected. Mm -hmm. And Swan came by, mm -hmm. and I think Swan was gonna hit, hook up with Cope, but somehow we saw that someone saying, "Yo, Cope is up on, on the layup between between uh, Fordham Road and Kingsbridge okay. on the four line." Okay. So I told I told Sam and Ken, "Yo, y'all go to Fordham and shit." on that station and come up and I'm going to come up from Kingsbridge. So, so I waited for Sam and Ken to go oh, all shit. the way that way and then I ran up to Kingsbridge uh -huh. and I guess they chased him out and he's coming down the stairs and I caught him and I had a little, I had a baseball bat, right? <laughs> and I catch Cope and I, and, and the whole beef was over MPC because I really had nothing personally against Cope. It was about him writing MPC. Really? Yeah, because MPC at that time, you know, Cap was going over everybody. Okay. Right? And come to find out, the reason Cap went over everybody is because everybody used to go over him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know? The shit perpetuates. Just, again, back know, to the negativity uh, thing. You know, it just keeps and, on moving. And, and even though, you know, like, let's say the movie Star Wars needed a bad guy oh. and, and Cap fit the bill, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it made the movie. It made the movie <laughs> fucking Star Wars, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, um, because of that NPC stuff that was going on, that Cap was going over everybody, you know, and... Cope started, you know, he came, when he started, he was writing with them because mm. Cap had put him down. So he was writing MPC. So I catch up to him and I'm like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you writing MPC, man? He said, yo, I ain't going to write it no more. No. I'm like, yo, man, I, I should beat your ass with this band. He said, no, no, no. So he, 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 went, he went to, and this is Cope telling me, he said that, that night he went over to, to Morris Park and he told Cap, yo, I ain't writing MPC no more, man. TK just almost fucking knocked my head off with a baseball bat. So then um, from, from what Cope told me, right, he go, <laughs> Cap goes, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he's going to be at Fashion Moda this weekend. Tracy told me. Tracy 168. Big, big shout, Tracy, you know? another OG. Yeah. Wow. So, so he goes, Tracy told me, man, that he's going to be over at a, uh, Fashion Moda. Yeah, we're going to see. And this is what Cope told me, right? <laughs> and, and unbeknownst to me, you know, I fucking go to Fashion Moda. It was a big thing that weekend. It was me and Sam and whatnot. <laughs> and um, 
I remember I was about to sell a drawing to this lady from Panama, a collector from Panama, and I never, you know, sold anything and stuff. This was like Fashion Motor was like the graffiti spot. It was a, it was a, it was like a little gallery. It, it wasn't really even a guy. It was like more of a hangout if you really think about. No, it. No, I know of it. I know from you know? previous podcasts. Yeah, it, it so, was, it's quite the unique thing. Of this yeah, time, it was, isn't it? man. Yeah. It was, it was really special. It was right there in the fucking mm-hmm. South Bronx, man. Mm-hmm. It was dope, right? And. um I remember, man, because I had some drawings and I remember telling Tracy, and that's how Tracy knew, oh, come on, come to the show. And Tracy was like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so sure enough, man, that's, that was a Saturday and shit, man. So I'm there talking to this lady. She's about to buy this fucking painting. And here comes fucking Cap. Oh, shit. Right? And I didn't even know who the hell he was because I never met Cap before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and there's this big dude standing there. I'm sitting talking to this lady. So you're a tea kid, huh? Oh, and I'm like, yo, man, I get up, I get up, and I'm still looking up at this motherfucker, man, really? you know? <laughs> and yo, let me tell you something, man. He goes, so you want to fight? And I, and I look at him, I said, fight? He goes, yeah, let's go outside. And I said, outside? Boom, I hit this motherfucker with all my might, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Broke his fucking nose the first shot, man. But yo, let me tell you, the dude was strong. He was big, but he wasn't... You know, and I ain't trying to put him down or anything like that or disrespect him, but at that particular moment, you yeah. know, I was fighting all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was slim, yeah. I was fast. You're I was nimble, like, you're nimble. I was yeah. very nimble, and I, and I could throw, yeah, yeah. you know? And yo, I was pounding this dude left and right, but he grabbed me and he wouldn't let go of me. He had Grabbed me by you the face. face? He had my, like, like that, and, and I was still banging him and shit, right? And at one point, he tried to, he tried to push me, but I, I was strong, and, and I put myself in a certain position, yeah. Right, while he's holding me, and then with my hand, I came like that, right? Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, we both it swing, the left and I threw right. him I threw him like through, through a fake wall, yeah. and he still wouldn't let go of me. Really? And I landed on top of him. And he's still right? holding your face and like he, that? Well, now he let go, and now I'm hitting him, and that's when everybody came <gasps> and fucking pulled us off, right? And I'm going to tell you, man, I remember right after that fight, like right after that moment, Whoa. right after that moment, right, fucking... um. Yo, I tell I tell Pete, I go, yo, Pete, me and him gonna throw down again, man. Cause you know, now it's time. I said, mm-hmm. we're gonna stab him, fuck him, let's kill him. We're yeah, gonna kill yeah. him, right? And um Tracy came in and blah blah blah. Come on, stop fighting, blah blah blah. And I have blood all over me, right? Oh, and I'm shit. like, yo, this fuck. It was cap from you know, from his nose yeah. and stuff, right? And uh, we made peace, right? We made peace that day, me and Cap, yeah. you know? Well, we real, real recognize his You know, it, 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 that, that's the thing, man. You know, and, and this, was, this was the thing about back in the days. You have a fight with somebody, yeah. you know? I remember fighting the same kid like 50 times. Sometimes he wins, sometimes I win. And, yeah. and, and at the end, we, we became friends. It wasn't none of this, I'm going to kill your family and all yeah. that other stuff. Like, you know, like nowadays. Nowadays is really bad, that's man, a, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, New York nowadays. You know? Oh, it's life. crazy, man. But anyway, um, you know... And, and, and <laughs> he goes the kicker of that story, man. The oh. best part was there was this chick. I don't know what country she was from, man. You know, she came into the bathroom when I was cleaning myself up, man. She, <laughs> she was helping me clean up, and she gave me a nice blowjob at the <laughs> stage. <laughs> yo, honey, man, that was before I met you, right? <laughs> yo, that's, yo, I'm telling you, man, that, that's life, man. But that that's life, bro. That's life. <laughs> yo, that shit was crazy. I never seen her again either, man. Wow. Just that day, man. It was That was a crazy thing. And, you know... What I come to understand, Cap stood up for Cope. So mm. I respect him for that. Yeah. You know? And, you know, he, 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 wants, you know, he wants to say he, that he won the fight, but, that, you know, you ask anybody that was there, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, they'll yeah, tell yeah. you something different, you know? All yeah. I know is that I got to throw down with, with one of the most notorious guys mm. at the time and shit. That's, that's for the history books. Yeah, and I was the only one. You know, everybody was looking for him and nobody ever fought him fair, you know what I'm saying? We're like that. Well. Loyalty within a crew is something that, I- I- even in this day and age, where well, things are a little bit more trickier, as we were talking, you know. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's a very different landscape. But loyalty within a graffiti crew is few and far between, I find. It's like, it's easy to put up a name. It's not that always that easy to hold up the name. It's not, man. It's not. Especially when, you know, you got to remember, when it comes to graffiti, we're dealing with a lot of egos. Mm. And in order to become famous, that ego has to be and big, narcissism man. narcissism as well. There's a lot oh, of Oh, of course, man. Of course. I mean, you hear it all the time, man. When you, <laughs> you just read some things that yeah. people write. Do you think that's youthful wisdom? Do you think some of that is just um, youth gone wild? It's, 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 it's youth. It's, it's, it's not, you know, not going through things. Because you're going to go through things. Like, okay, I come to realize that when I was like that, my ego... 
It was all about me, 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 me. Mm. I made a lot of enemies. And once mm. again, I started thinking about yeah. what I wanted to do. Mm. What I really wanted to do, and what I wanted to do was paint yeah. and have fun. Because it does get in the way, doesn't it? It did get in the way for me. You know, it might not for everybody, but for me and a lot of people that I know, it does get in the way. You know, and I've noticed that people with the biggest egos always got the biggest problems. Biggest problem. If you really took, yeah. If you if you really think about it, yeah. Big time. If you really think about it, if you look at all the beef and all the stuff, what's it all about? About some, oh, they said this mm. or they said that, you know. And then people, when they react to it, they start owning things, you know. They own the pain of that. Exactly. How do you, as T kid, you know, with at least like. 45 years under your belt of like of graph right for real yeah, right man, for real man <clears throat> I mean, for real you know, for real hip hop's turning 50 next year yeah. you were there from the from the beginning bro from the beginning man i'm curious what music do you listen to i listen to beats man i love hip hop bro oh my god you know, and, and, and it's funny because i like the old school shit man i'm yeah. into, totally into the beats man i be yeah. i be listening listen i i, I listen to to the shit before it was cut, like like my kids, they, <laughs> the they, demo they'll, shit, the they'll, they'll be yeah, they'll be like I'll put on a beat or something, like like I'll play, let's say Babe Ruth, man, you know the yeah, Mexican, of course. you know, and they, and they'll hear the beat in that that song, right, <laughs> and, and, and they'll be like, oh that song, that's that's where that came from. People don't they, 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 they don't they know don't, they they, don't they, don't, they think that they just made mm. up that song like at that time, they, you know. They don't realize that it was the actually same thing. Something. Daisy Lady, that that's the yeah. the, the Sugar Hill. That's beat. right. That's right. <laughs> Like, I, I listened to the whole song, you know? I love it you do that. Um, I, I remember listening to the Kid Capri 62 Beats. Bro, oh. bro that's one of the biggest mixtapes in my life. I'm telling though. you, man. Oh. That, that kid, man. That, that Kid Capri's the shit, man. The shit. You know? Anyway, yes. back to what I was saying before. <laughs> so that's the music I listen to. I yeah. listen to beats. I listen to beats. You know, and, and, and that's like a big thing in my playlist. And whenever I'm painting, especially when I'm in the studio by myself, man, you know, I fucking, mm. I put on my beats and that shit just takes me back to that time. Yeah. It'll take me back to the Bronx in the late 70s mm -hmm. when, 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 they, when they were jamming in the streets, mm -hmm. you know. I think it does for all of, but for, for different reasons because, you know, we live... We live through uh, the, the the worlds of Wild Star, Star Wars, and of an of a of a real um, nostalgic, uh, cuddly era. Um, just going back to what I was saying, though, um, how does T Kid, in forty five years of graffiti, uh, compartmentalize in his head when someone's being narcissistic? How, I mean, we're talking about your, the mixed taste and the playing the beats and getting yourself shut off and just enjoying your pleasurable time. But how the fuck do you... Because you must have, over the years, dealt with so many motherfuckers, you know what I mean? How do you, how do, you do that? How do you figure your shit and, and avoid it? You know, it, it's funny. You can't avoid anything, man. You just learn to deal with shit and let people be people, you know? Mm. At the end of the day, I, you know, and, and for me, the reason it's easy for me to just let people be people is because I remember when I was like that. Right. You know? There, there before the grace of God go I. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, I know, I know the end to that story. Mm. I know the end to that story, okay? You could go on about yourself, about yourself, about yourself. Mm. You know, and it's cool. You know, do do what you do you. But at the end of the day, everything has consequences to it, man. Yeah, it does, really you know. Does. And, and the more people, you know, the more the more you own something. Like whenever you're on top, you know, the, the, they say that that you're not re, you're not you're not really famous until you have haters. Mm. And when you it's start feeding, true. it is true. But when you start feeding into the haters, yeah, you know, yeah, you're, you're giving them the right you're, you're, you're giving them the power. And, and they, that's what they want. They want that power. They want that power because they'll, they'll keep on. They'll mm. just keep on and on and on and on and on. Listen, man, I know people that you beat their fucking heads to the ground. And, and they still keep, keep going. And they still keep Energizer on Energizer bunnies somewhere. Like exactly. And they'll make it even worse, man. And then they'll come up with new shit. And I know people going through that how shit. Have you, how have you become so at peace with that? Dude, man, one of the things I had to do was understand that, you know what? I like I, I wanted peace of mind all my life. I wanted peace of mind, and that's a big reason why I stopped getting high. Mm. Because when I get high and stuff, you know, I, I stay stuck mm. in thoughts. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that but that's me. I ain't talking about anybody. I'm just talking about me. Even hangovers yeah. and things like that. You yeah, just end all up that shit. You know, stuck forever. You know, I, I stay stuck in in those emotions and stuff, man. Today I like to feel my feelings. Like I go, mm. somebody will say something or whatever. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You say what you have I'll to say. I'll take it. Fine. Yeah. At the end of the day, the reality sets in. I look, I look at, 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 at how far I've come. I look at what I have. I look how good my life is. Yeah. So I don't, I, don't, I don't really feed into the negativity. 
You know? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you feel like that? You're entitled to feel the way you mm. you, you want to feel, man, you know? Yeah, yeah, I feel What's you. the truth? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the truth? Who knows what the fucking truth is? Nobody. Fucking right. That is so true. <laughs> Recognize your own truth, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Know your truth. Exactly. Because, because that's the thing. <laughs> in, in the classic, the truth will set you free. Exactly. Isn't that something? I'm telling you, man, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I learned that, man. I learned that, bro. And today I'm I'm just like trying to live the best life that I can. And you know what? And I want to paint. I want to create. And I want to be part of this society. And I yeah. want to be part of my culture. Yeah. I love my culture, my you graffiti really culture. Yeah, like do. I said, man, when I listen to those beats, it takes me back to when this started, yeah, yeah, yeah. when it was all about hope and dreams. Yeah. You know, and somewhere along the line, I, I went astray. You know, and I had to learn to pull myself back, yeah, you know, and, and let go of the anger and the resentment. And that, that was a real key part for me. Mm. You know, and I'm probably boring with people because they don't want to hear that. They want to hear the rah-rah shit. Everybody wants to hear rah-rah. And I can tell you a lot of rah-rah shit. Mm. I went through a lot of rah-rah shit. Yeah, I mean, shit. you can listen to the other podcasts where there's some rah-rah shit. Yeah. But it, it won't serve you as good as this one, well, trust me. Um, <laughs> there was something profound you actually said on the last podcast, which I, I actually transfer to a lot of people that ever have doubts and come on podcast. You said, and I quote, I said to you, how come you weren't on the Star Wars documentary? Uh, and you said, the reason why I'm here right now. Is because I didn't want to <laughs> fucking... I was a hardcore graffiti writer yeah. and I kept it real. Like, kept you know, it real I, kept, I felt I kept it real and, and, I, and I, I, I felt like that was selling out, mm. you know? Selling myself out and letting people, because I remember look turning on the TV, mm. you know, the news would come on, graffiti writers all over. This is how they steal spray paint. And you have kids that, that just started writing, man, or yeah, whatever, yeah, talking grabbing. about, well, I go to the store and I rack up over here. Next thing I know, I see all the good racks, man. They're putting the paint behind the counter yeah, yeah. and fucking all kind of shit. shit up and, uh, yeah, and then the yard's getting hot, you know, mm. and whatnot. And then the fucking man may have that fucking rest in yeah, peace, yeah, man. Nah, the rest in whatever, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, putting up razor wire all over the place, man, and getting cut. I mean, get, it didn't <laughs> stop me. It just made it a little fucking more difficult. You still get dumped, Kutch, even now. Yeah, of course, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Take a dump on his grave. <laughs> Shit, bringing up the fucking rents and having a rent stabilized apartment in the Trust village. That motherfucker. Man, it ain't getting easier in this day and age. Oh, anyway, forget right? it, man. Forget it. But yeah, man, that rah rah shit, man. Mm -hmm. Yo, listen, man. I could tell you, here, here, here's, you know, as a result of that, I remember I, I, I was with um, Ken and Booza, and we went into the one yard, and it was John One who um, Rack Seven. I said, Yo, let's hook up with John One. We're gonna go paint. Blah, blah, blah. John, um, Rack, I don't know what happened to him. He got high. He couldn't go nowhere. We were supposed to meet John and, and, and this kid, Era. And we go down to the one tunnel and only Era showed up. Okay. All right? Uh -huh. And it was me, Ken, and Booza and that kid, Era. And we were doing some dope shit. And all of a sudden, the ball busters came like a hundred of them, it's not a hundred. I want to say about about but it looked twenty from the shadows. About twenty or twenty, twenty against four or whatever. That's still man. a lot. That's a Yo. lot. So they came. So we go out and then they surrounded us. They 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 came. They grabbed Ken's mm -hmm. paint, the bag. I had a messenger bag and they tried to grab my paint. I was like, hell no. So they surrounded us, man. You know, and I wrote this in my book, man. Mm -hmm. Which is a really limited book to get, by the way. Yeah. Good man. luck with that one. Yeah, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> another reason why I learned. Mm -hmm. But anyway. So, so they surrounded me, and I, and I think it was, um, you know, after hearing, you know, tax has been talking a lot of shit about yeah. me on the internet, but, okay. you know, he's got issues, man. Okay. <laughs> no, God bless him. Oh, yeah. Pick up but, yourself. But anyway, he, he's the one that put the name on who was the guy. He said, hey, that's T-Kid. I said, T-Kid, puñalo, puñalo. That's in Spanish. That's T-Kid. Stab him, stab him. They surrounded me. I was surrounded, and I had that messenger bag, and they tried to grab my <laughs> pen. I was like, hell no, I ain't giving <laughs> up my pen. <laughs> and yeah, ooh, and they surrounded me. So I'm like, oh shit, when I heard that guy say, and it was, I think his name was Panama, Kid Panama, he was a big dude too, but that didn't mean <laughs> shit. Anyway, they surrounded me, they tried to grab my paint, that's T kid, stab him, stab him. I started swinging, like when they came to, like somebody tried to yeah, kick yeah, me, I started yeah. swinging, swinging the bag, bag around in a circle. Yo, you want to talk about miracles, bro? Yo, that bag opened up, and I had like 15 cans of Krylon in there. Mm. Them shits came out like bullets, bullets, bro, and fucking opened a little path for me, <laughs> and I took off, and they couldn't catch me, bro. What? Yo, that shit was... Yo, they had me dead to rights. They would have killed me. They would have killed me. See, wow. reasons, reasons like this I think about. I think about the times when I was underneath, like, like me. I had my brother with me. 
my brother, he, he crazy 505 he wrote, he, but he wasn't really a writer. He crazy. And, he, and he comes and he comes and he comes with me, and we're in the one tunnel, and all of a sudden we see all these lights and stuff and people, and we duck under the train, right? We duck under the train, they go by us, they didn't see us, they go by us, right? So I come, I, my, I pull my brother out, I go in to get the bag of paint, yeah, I had a duffel yeah, bag yeah, of yeah, paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the minute I grab the duffel bag of paint, the train fucking jerks, I jump out with the Stop paint. Stop it. You know? Things like this happen on a regular basis, man. You would have been gone. Would have been dead, bro. Crushed, electrocuted, whatever. Yeah. You know, and, and things like this happen all the time. And I look back. I look back and say, you know what, wow. man? Who needs who needs the fucking beef when we got all this other shit going, shit going on? on? You know? And, and and it's funny, man. Look, today, nowadays, man, I have nothing but but respect for Cap. Mm. Baby Rock. One of the coolest brothers, man, around, man. Mm -hmm. You know, he was down with the ball busters, mm -hmm. and he was at that time a, an enemy. Mm -hmm. He's not now. He's my friend. Because yeah, life is Yo. too short, man. Yeah, exactly, man. Life exactly. Is too short, man. You know, Cope, man. You know, I used to tell these guys go catch and beat him up. Today, you know, Cope has looked out for me in so many different ways, mm -hmm. especially when it came to, to graffiti gigs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's looked out, and, mm -hmm. he, and he's a cool guy. He's got his quirks. We all have our quirks, you yeah, know. Yeah, for real. But he's a cool guy, you know. I mean, I give mad respect to my elders and stuff and the guys who taught me, Tracy 168, man. Yeah. You know, Padre, oh. rest in peace, man. Oh, you know? 100%. But, Big shout out to Ree as well. Yeah. Oh, oh Ree, man. Yeah. That's my bro, man. Sure, Ree. Sure. That's another old Pell, man. I mean, Pell, do it well, yeah, Pell, man. man. Big time. He's he's okay. he's a style master, man. That dude, you know. He's and he's still and he's oh man, he's been getting better and better. I've been watching him. You've been watching him. Yeah, yeah. He builds, builds, builds. He's, <laughs> you on, know? he's on the move, and it's lovely to see. Um, on that subject of techers, yeah. um. And, and, you know, this is lame in questions here because I need to know, just as a fan first, how many times a day do you sketch? <sighs> you know, it's funny. I got my moods, man. You know, I'm older now, you know, and I got family and I got things to do. But when I get into my thing, mm. like, I'll be sketching all day. Do you I'll feel be... like you need to because you just go up, rock up to a wall and just... Nah, it, it's funny. I do, it, it's like I, I love doing it when I start. And, and you can ask my wife. My wife knows me. <laughs> she goes, when you get in your moods, this is what you do. Mm. You start sketching. Like, I'll be feeling good for no reason. And all of a sudden, I'll just start drawing. I'll draw all fucking day. And I'll do like fucking 50 different outlines bang, and whatnot. Bang, bang, bang. You know? And I'll put them shits away. I got like a whole fucking mm. box. A big fucking cardboard box full of sketches. Really? Yeah. So you don't even have black books anymore. You're like, fuck that. I'm just doing I got black books too, man. Really? But black books take too much time, man. I'm talking about just fucking peace. And Can you imagine? Like that's like a that's like a real NFT. It's like yeah, no, I know physical I know. NFTs. Exactly. So you could have like a whole black book. You could yeah. sell for like five to ten more grand. You know. I've done it before and stuff, man. I, 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 you know, and you, you know, I'll never do it again because you, you regret that. Yeah, of course. Because a do. black book, man. You know, you gotta understand what a All black the best book things, is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a book of ideas, mm. and I learned that. You know, sir, I got to give this to sir. Sir did it right, man. He made a book out of a black book. That's a great idea. <laughs> that was a dope idea, That's man. a dope idea. That's a dope idea, you know, because now he's, he keeps the black book mm. and he sells the, you know, he sells the copy. Priceless shit. Yeah, exactly, Priceless. man. You know, and I give it to sir, man, because that, that was a real, that was a real smart move. And now, you know, he just posted on, on, on Instagram that, you know, he talked to Matt and they're going to put out the book Fucking again. Fucking sick. Now, now, my book. See, and the reason that my book is limited <laughs> The edition, notorious book, the book. You know, once again, you know, the rah-rah shit, you know, <laughs> you know, homeboy didn't pay me correctly. He didn't, he didn't do the right thing when it came in. I, and I was in Germany. I was yeah. in Berlin and I told homeboy, I said, yo, my man, you know, what's up? I'm here. Oh, well, my partner's not here when I knew his partner was there because yeah. I talked to somebody else who was just with his partner. Okay. So the guy was lying to me, you know. And, um, you know, the contract said you give me so much per book, right? Not per book sold. It's like you printed out the books. You got to pay me. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, you know, I took it upon myself to go with a couple of guys, you know, old school style, Vamp yeah. Squad style. Yeah, yeah. And I went over there to his little hip hop shop, tore the place up, fucked him and his partner up, really? you know, and he called the cops, snitch, yeah, you know, said shit. that I robbed them, which is bullshit. I didn't rob them. No, you were, they were robbing you. And pretty <laughs> much. Because I, you know, and, and this was the stupid mood. I never got paid. I mean, I got paid a little bit. But, but not what they owe me. Yeah. You're you know? definitely not getting paid off the back. And of I'm not getting paid, you know? So were you lie back in Germany now? So, uh, yeah, my boy, my boy fucking hooked up a lawyer and, you know, Good. he took care of that situation Good. because, you got you my know, Germany crew? Yeah. Say? Well, it wasn't Germany. It was a, it, it was a guy from, from, from the Netherlands who got me a German lawyer. Ah, you man. know, <laughs> so he hooked okay. it up. And all it did was cost me a, a dope canvas, man. It's an international man of mystery here. He's got lawyers in different locations. I'm telling said. you, man, <laughs> shit, man. You got to have these shits, man. 
you know. Yo. So, so canvases so, and things like that, you know, books and things like that. These are just like a common, uh, you know, your, your output. That's my currency. Yeah, that's the real currency, <laughs> that's, that's right? That's the currency is my art. You know, but like I said, I keep shit. I keep shit. Like I got that whole cardboard box, man. A big fucking cardboard box, bro. <sighs> Full of fucking sketches and stuff. You know, some of them have color in it. Some, yeah. you know, some most of them are, are just sketches and ideas. You put color in them with the sketches as well. Sometimes, yeah. yeah, yeah Sometimes yeah. it depends. Like you know, what I'm in the mood for and yeah, stuff, yeah. man. But yeah, it's when I get into the black books that I really start, you know, putting in the color and stuff. Because man, it's a book, isn't it? It's, it's a book. Yeah, everything. it's a book. God, I love that. So, so we'll be able to see all of your pieces rocking. Yeah. Tomorrow, yeah, you see some Colorado. stuff, yeah. See, see some stuff. See kind some of it all, st- you understand. See some stuff. I brought some stuff with me. Um, also, I'm, I got some prints and stuff. I'm getting smart. I'm getting like serving them. I'm gonna start putting out prints instead of selling yeah. the original drawing and shit, you know. And also, as well as um posters and keychains and stickers. Oh, you you know? got keychains? Yeah, I got keychains. Come on, my shit, guy. Man, I got a keychain. I got a little my character and shit, man. Yeah, oh, games, yo, oh, I got, I got, I got some money for you. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, let's see it. Let's see some bits. Oh, you know we got the VIP. Oh, oh shit, that's a caps. Yeah. <laughs> Always, just in case of trouble, you understand, we got caps. Oh, shit. Stickers and... So for those of you listening, unfortunately not watching, which you can always do on the uh, television channel, we've got right, fridge magnets, pins. Yo, it's all good. Look. Like, but the keychains are like this. Oh, yo. Yeah, let's see. Let's see this. They're like this character right here, man. Oh, yeah. They're they're in the hotel, man. See? There we go. So what we got here? Yeah, I'll put it on the screen. Watch. Yeah, (laughs) these are plastic as well. Nice coverage. There we go. That's the classic character, the T-Kid character right here for your eyes. No worries, man. And we got the pin as well. Yeah, <laughs> definitely getting that. That shit is those. funny. You know, you know, it's funny. My daughter got me into this shit, man. She was like, "Hey, you should do stickers and you should yeah. do this." Well, we know it, don't you know? we? That it always comes from outside sources. These great ideas, don't they? Yeah, man. You know shit, because I, I mean, I'm stupid, man. I don't think about it. I just sketch all day like a fucking horse. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. You know, it's 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 um these big marketing companies. They have team meetings about this stuff and brainstorming and shit yeah, like that. You know what I mean? And I got my fucking daughter, man. With nothing better to do this. <laughs> And it works, you know. Say, yo, why don't you do this? And I'd be like, all right. <laughs> You're right. Okay. So that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Yeah, Chrome tomorrow, and man. black. You know what time it is. Two till six. Word, man. Get down there and meet an OG, original archetype Don in the flesh. Chrome and black, home of the moving stars. He's that's in there. That's right, man. That's right. T kid. My, my man, finally get to meet yes. you in person, man, and hang something. out, man. It was a pleasure, man, doing Proper your podcast, vibes, man. I hope, I hope, uh, you know, it's fantastic. And thank you, sir. Viva the fucking tea kid, Tim P. You know what time it is? Killer Killer podcast. We're out like him was out of fashion, sharing his care. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. All right, stay lucky, people. Cheers, T kid. Cheers, my brother. Peace. Peace. Peace.